what is going on guys this is mando with m traders i'm gonna be talking about natural gas today and maybe some other tickers we'll see we'll play it you know by year as we go with this video now if you do not know who we are uh or who i am i mostly talk about natural gas um fundamentals so you guys the gas ung right so in the direction where i think personally uh based on fundamentals and based on other um you know, uh, analytical companies, which I'm subscribed to, where I think natural gas is gonna go. So for the, for today, which is May 12th, let's see where I think uh, in the short term, in the long term, where natural gas is going to go. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do subscribe in the description on the, on, um, yeah, subscribe to the uh, to the videos and, uh, and also make sure you turn on the notification settings, which is that little, uh, bell on the on the bottom of the channel on the bottom of the video right and also if you want to join our discord chat go right ahead we have the links below and also i have broker links like um trade net links uh webull links uh which by the way we was coming up with some great great uh us uh, uh i want to say settings right so but that's another story right like you can buy pre-ipo um, stocks. A lot of people uh, were like, "Well, I already buy IPO stocks." I'm like, "No, no, no. Pre-IPO. That means pre-opening on Nasdaq or you know on the on the exchanges before they open. You're able to buy some. So, for example, BYND. If you were able to buy it at you know pre-IPO at thirty dollars and it opens up at forty-six. Where's value at 25 and you put some 46 you automatically make money well that stock went all the way to 86 so that being said um make sure you check it out you get a stock i get a stock we all happy people right so to start off so we open on natural gas we actually gapped down because we had uh neutral to slightly bearish uh news on on the fundamentals Meaning the total day degrees were actually less than you know anticipated, just slightly, not too much. Um, again, I'm not able to show the fundamentals for obvious reasons, right? Uh, somebody yelled at me, so I'm not gonna show them, but I'm gonna talk about them, right? So the 12Z weather models uh, were neutral to slightly bearish uh, versus uh, the Friday's 12 or the 1200 hour uh, results. The projected TDDs are 3.9 below last year levels and 0 0.6 below the norm. Projected CDDs are now above projected HDDs. Okay, so what does that mean? So, the cooling day degrees are above the projected heating day degrees. So right now the, the cooling day degrees are increasing uh, a little bit more significantly than the uh, heating day degrees. So right now what's gonna be driving the market is how hot you know the weather is gonna come. Now it's not how cold because cold weather kinda is not gonna be playing a big role in uh, this scenario. We have uh, production in the US lower 48. Dry gas production reached an all time high in March 29th at 90 Point four billion cubic feet. Um, that's 1100 mmmcf um, from the previous all-time high reached on November 30th, on 20 uh, on 2018. So November 30th, you know, we're actually slightly above uh, the all-time high, um, which we produced 90.4. I think it was uh, 89.9, 89.6. Um, do not remember very well, but the thing is, we, uh, the last time we produced this much uh, natural gas was in March 29th, right? So that's a few weeks ago. We also have the daily rate has not set a new all-time high for 44 consecutive days now, dry, so which is the few weeks, dry gas production, Got dry gas production has averaged 89.2 billion cubic feet per day over the past 44 days. We currently expect the U.S. lower 48 dry production to average around 90.06 billion cubic 
cubic feet per day over the next three months. So that's May, June, and July, uh, which is about 0.14 billion cubic feet uh, higher per day than the last um, EIA estimate of 89.92 billion cubic feet per day. So who, for those people that do not know who the EIA, that's the Department of Energy, basically, that tells they have estimates how much production they're going to be having over the next year or so or next month or next weeks. Right, that's when Thursday report, that's when you kind of, a lot of people play the reports if you know what's going to be, if it's going to be a, a bullish surprise or a bearish surprise, right? So for this instance, this was, I believe, 5.9, that was Thursday if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so 5.9, notice it was a, actually it was a bearish surprise, right? Um me when i know it's bearish usually it tends to do this right it'll go up and down you know probably almost a percent right one to yeah about one percent up and down but if it's bearish overall for the end of the day it's going to start turning all the way down right so in this in this case it did reach i, I was in the s it went all the way down to about 2.561 i actually sold once i started rejecting and i bought you guys and sold you guys on Friday. And actually, I saw that a bit too early. I was about 2.641. Yeah, I missed out just a little bit, but not as much. I went D-Gas, I wrote it down for the end of the day, and I sold all my natural gas ETFs, including my UNG calls, because it actually was, UNG was pretty amazing. Um, However, now that we I'm seeing this, I, I do think that due to you know current weather uh, models and where we stand on the price, and for being you know end of uh, it's not an end of month, but it's we still like the beginning of the season of um, hot season. The total day degrees still do not justify to be above. Prices above 2.64, and I do think it's going to be limited by prices at 2.8 before it comes crashing down again to the 2.5 area for the months of uh, the fall, right? That's kind of like widow maker months as well. So definitely if it reaches about 2.8, I will go start buying uh, heavy positions on the gas and UNG puts. If we reach 2.8, 2.9, if we reach 2.9 to even 3.0, definitely over the next few months, definitely I'm going to be uh, inputs, right? Now, vice versa, if we are able to reach 2.55 again, which is, that's, that's what I hope because of the slightly bearish news that it's going to continue the downtrend all the way to 2.55, I'm going to start adding, even at 2.56, I'm going to start adding positions to it and I'm going to be watching it closely as we go because remember, fundamentals are great, but it doesn't tell you, oh, it's going to hit 2.55 and you're going to buy there. Otherwise, everybody will be rich, right? So, we have to make sure that we're due diligent in what we do, right? And what we um, buy. So again, these are just ideas. So if it starts reaching low and I start seeing some resistance, right? You might want to um, start adding to your position. The perfect example is this day, right? So it reached all the way down and it instantly got rejected and it started getting rejected even more and even more. Why? Because notice that the 2.55 and I keep repeating this over and over and over. I know we reached the lowest of 2.543. However, it got rejected, you see? We had a support over at this uh, this price, 2.5, I mean 2.451. Um, and we saw that this price was actually a good support. One, almost a good support here, twice, three times. It went right back up. It came crashing down at 2.43. I actually added quite a few, uh, quite a few shares in this level, uh, just because it was way below expectations, um, and I decided to go along. Right. So this is where your TA, your technical analysis, come in. So again, this is the fundamentals are to give us an overall picture of where we're going. Right. So if you were to buy here and hold, you pretty much will be safe. Right. 
but then you will miss out on this nice you know uptrend and then downtrend you know you can buy u gas d gas u gas d gas and keep going from there so you can profit several times versus somebody that would just buy now and sell probably in july I, even though I think that June might be where we're going to reach our, our top level. Now, I do think that it's time for uh, natural gas to come back down, right? And I'm going to be waiting for it when it does. So, uh, again, I will be looking at my resistance, a 2.55 area. That's my ideal buying point, right? I would probably invest 50% of my account at 2.55 anything below i will start adding in 15 percent increments until i'm satisfied with what i have right so from here i do think that this thing might reach low probably around this level it might not be until the morning however i do think that's going to happen but again i'm not in anything so i'm in no rush to wait if it goes higher and it actually uh, opens up higher, uh, like 2.66 area, 2.64, um, that might indicate a double top, and I will definitely buy more D gas at this level. Uh, two, uh, anything above 2.64, I'll buy D gas. Anything below 2.55, I'll buy U gas. So that's my opinion, right? And then I want to make sure that I show you guys the multi year. Uh, low. Where's my twenty years? Ooh, I must have uh, erased it. Wow. Okay. So let's do. If you don't know how to set up your um your time range, quick uh um quick teaching learning lesson. All right. So you go here. You go time frame, twenty years. I want to look at daily. I think daily is better. Yeah. We might have to do weekly just to have a shorter version. Okay, voila. So this is the 20 year. So this actually was pretty low back then. Oh my God, 1.9. I would love if I was in the guys. So um, notice that for the last three years, it's been holding a pretty good support on the 2.55 area, right? 2.544. This area is the bouncing points and the reversals, right? We saw this year it actually acted as a support. However, it broke below that this time of the year. But once it broke below, it was a no-brainer for me, and we bought um, uh, you guys. Now, notice that on this scenario, uh, we do have a reversal signal indicating a reversal on this uh, 415. On 415, we have a reversal signature. That means that it might run a little bit longer. I think all the way to like July 1st, we might have, or okay, June 24. I think that we're gonna pick out about June 24, if I'm not mistaken, on the uptrend. So we need to pull back, we need equilibrium, and that's what we need. Okay, so, I believe I'm on oh, 13 minutes and 34 seconds. Fantastic. So at least it's not half an hour because I don't even like to listen to myself for half an hour. So hope you guys like it. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you join our Discord chat group. We start getting into our War Room channel, which is the talk channel in Discord. You know, when you have a bunch of other traders talking about ideas, what we're going to do for the day. And this is just stuff that we like to do every morning. So from 7.30 and on, we are planning ahead on what we're going to trade and what are we going to do. And just make sure you just join us. Um, if you want to, you don't want to talk, that's fine. You can just mute yourself and hear everybody else on their ideas. And uh, kind of maybe you pick out something that you might like, right? So make sure you do subscribe. Make sure you join us. Uh, it is free. We don't charge, right? We're not like those YouTube people that charge you $300 to join the channel. Uh we do it because we honestly want to help people, you know. I met other like-minded individuals that like to help people, and I said, hey, let's make a channel, and maybe we'll go from, we'll start from there, right? So, uh, hopefully, hopefully you guys like this video, and see you guys later. Peace.